treatment courses. Assistant County Manager Daryl Martin says changes must happen now. There is the public outrage and sense of urgency that, you know, this is my community and this is happening in my community. We need to fix it. There may be a full autopsy or they may do a medical review, but they all the cases will be looked at by the coroner's office. And every case looked at by the coroner's office will be passed on to Child Protective Services. A total of 41 more workers will be added to the agency. Bomb squad was called out and stores were evacuated earlier this evening when a man told police he had a grenade. It started out as an argument between two people near Colton and Losey. When police arrived, one of the men told police about that grenade and then police determined the grenade had been hollowed out and no one was hurt. New charges have been filed against the former California Highway Patrol officer accused of kidnapping and sexually assaulting a local boy. And these added charges have frightening implications for the victim. Turns out the suspect, Sean Shelton, is HIV positive, so he is now being charged with intentional transmission of HIV, the virus that causes AIDS. Back in May, police say Shelton convinced the 14-year-old that he was a police officer. Then they say he drove him out to the desert and sexually assaulted him. An Illinois police officer is in jail, charged with raping four women. Police say Sergeant Jeff Pilo, a 17-year veteran, raped four women since 2002. Pilo is also charged with using information from the police department to stalk a woman and then later try to break into her house. Police say they found evidence among items from the women's home at Pilo's house. The conflict in the Gaza Strip is starting to careen out of control as world leaders try to get a handle on the situation. Leaders of Hezbollah, guerrilla fighters are now calling for an all-out war against Israel. The Israeli military has been destroying the Libya-based militant group's headquarters, and Hezbollah has been firing rockets into Israel. The two countries traded harsh words on the floor of the UN today. The real occupying power in Lebanon is terror. Terror instigated by Hezbollah, but initiated, funded, and perpetrated by Syria and Iran. What Israel is undertaking is an act of aggression and devastation. At least 73 Lebanese and 12 Israelis have died in the last two days. Those conflicts are expected to push gas prices up toward $4 a gallon soon. Right now we're pushing the $3 mark. Cost of a gallon of regular unleaded gas here stayed a steady at $2.98. Nationwide average is around $2.96. But energy analysts say the price of crude oil rose to over $77 a barrel. Analysts say prices could hit $80 next week and stay there. President Bush is at the G8 summit in Russia where rogue nations are taking center stage in talks. But before the summit begins tomorrow, Russian President Vladimir Putin and President Bush met for dinner. They are showing the importance of keeping a good relationship between the U.S. and Russia. The president has been critical, though, of Russia's recent moves away from democracy. The former CIA agent who was suing the vice president and several key Bush administration officials spoke publicly today. Valerie Plame says her identity as a covert agent was leaked to the media in retaliation for her husband challenging the president's reasons for going to war in Iraq. Plame is accusing Cheney, as well as Bush advisor Karl Rove and several others, of conspiring to ruin her career. That a few reckless individuals within the current administration betrayed that trust has been a grave disappointment to every patriotic American. A federal grand jury has already investigated the leak. The only person charged is Vice President Cheney's former chief of staff, Louis Libby, who is accused of lying to authorities about the leak. Police may uh, have arrested a woman in connection with the theft of hundreds of radios from Clark County School District buses. The uh, thefts happened in 2005. Police say Joy Francis had some of the radios in her possession. They say more arrests are coming in other states. In fact, more than 200 radios were stolen at a cost of about $400 each. Gun enthusiasts were drawn in with the promise of their dream community. Homes in a safe, master-planned neighborhood with a massive gun range as a unique attraction. But were the buyers duped? The I-Team was the first to tell you about allegations of fraud, racketeering, and embezzlement against the Front Sight Firearms Training Institute near Pahrump. The I-Team's Colleen McCarty is here now with the latest on this lawsuit. Colleen. Paula, three Front Sight members filed a class action lawsuit last November, each with the same goal, 
ensure the survival of the organization while forcing it to make good on its promises. Nine months later, their attorney says they may have just hit their mark. Ready, fire. Its creator built it as a Disneyland for gun enthusiasts. A 550-acre master plan community with the shooting range as the draw. Well, the vision out here at Front Sight is to have the safest town in America. Thousands of people bought in, with memberships ranging in price from a few thousand to hundreds of thousands of dollars. This is how the guns are transported and how they're stored. Most guaranteed a lifetime of weapons training. Safety procedures, very simple. Six-figure deals called platinum memberships promised a one-acre home site. Front site president Dr. Ignatius Piazza. And at some point in the future when the development is, is completed, they'll have access to a one-acre home site. And at that point, we would deed it out to them. Bill Haig, seen here in 2001, thought he'd retire on the range. But one year became three, became five, with his dream home no closer to completion. That's what happened here. Piazza took other people's money for investment capital to start this operation up. And then once he got it up and running, he hung them out to dry. There's been no water, no roads, no grading, no electricity. Last November, attorney Keith Greer filed a class action lawsuit on behalf of Haig and two other members. In it, he charged fraud, racketeering, and misappropriation of funds by Piazza and the organization. After months of litigation in federal court, Monday a judge ruled Front Sight could no longer sell memberships without court approval. Settlement discussions began the same day. We tried to structure things so that the end result would actually wind up helping both sides, you know, give uh, the members uh, the security that they were looking for and the company uh, the security it was looking for to maintain its position in the market. Greer won't discuss specifics, only to say that they tentative agreement will benefit all members. Ready, fire! Like Haig, who believed in the Disneyland for gun lovers, only to end up feeling taken for a ride. To give both sides time to work out a deal, the judge stayed his order for 90 days, meaning Front Sight can sell memberships unless the settlement talks break down. Hmm. That next hearing is scheduled for October, but Keith Greer, the attorney, says he expects an announcement before then. Ah, okay. Good job on this, Colleen. Well, a six-year-old boy made a big donation to help keep his classmates safe. Jack Broadhead Greason heard his father talking about an organization that helps make sure kids get to school safely and decided to donate $1,000 of his own savings. Jack's aunt, Gina, started the organization called Kids About. Jack's father says Jack just wants to make sure kids are safe. She was asking and she's saying if I knew anybody that would make donations or, you know, or if I would help at all. And she heard, he heard us talking and he goes, I'd like to make a donation. And I said, are you sure? And that's giving money and, and his toy money and everything else. And he said, yeah. Mm -hmm. Kids About says 31 accidents were reported near Clark County Schools just last year. He's taking it all in stride. He's taking it seriously. How about that? Yes, That's he really is. a neat spirit. It is. Tough weekend coming oh, up. Oh, Kevin. <laughs> what an introduction. Thank you very much. Yeah, we've got tons of stuff to talk about. First, the smoke. Now, here it was the way it looked yesterday with the pretty potent southwesterly winds. So you had a narrow plume of smoke going into southern Nevada, the Las Vegas Valley, right being, well, being right there. Now today, it's a whole different story because the smoke sort of fanned out as the winds died down. Take a look at this closer picture. You can see, of course, here's Big Bear Lake. But instead of the narrow plume, as it gets up closer to Nevada, the smoke spreads out. And that's why I was covering almost the entire southern tip of the state. And we'll deal with more smoke tomorrow, maybe until early Sunday, before things change as far as the wind goes. Now, let me show you the view from our camera on top of Boulder Station. Here's the way the smoke looked in time-lapse fashion. A lot of glare out there because of the smoke. And then late this afternoon, we had one of those orange sunsets. Speaking of which, take a look at this picture sent to us from Wanda Van Dyke from Sandy Valley. And this will give you an idea of how the sunset looked down there with all the smoke. I guess it's the one positive byproduct, the beauty, with the orange sky right at sundown. It is still hot outside. Neighborhood temperatures horizon and Greenway. They're at 101 degrees right now, blowing at 7, only 10% humidity. 
humidity and Mount Charleston on the other end of the spectrum, a very refreshing 61 degrees. We are seeing the humidity numbers in some neighborhoods start to creep up Get a little bit of a dry pocket in the southwest, but we are going to see a whole lot more moisture as we get to the early stages of next week. And look at this heat and numbers are warming from there. Look at all the one teens north Las Vegas all the way through the east side of town. 117 in Laughlin, 114 in Moapa. Ay, yeah, 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 yeah. 21 in Death Valley at McCarran today. The top temperature 109, five above normal on both the high and the low side. The carmometer 139 degrees when we open the car door. No clouds. We don't think that'll change. High pressure is the dominant weather feature, and as long as it is locked right there, we're going to sizzle this weekend. But the high is going to break down late Sunday and Monday. Wind patterns change, and up comes the moisture out of the south. Clouds will start rolling in, so will the humidity and a chance for thunderstorms as early as Monday. But tomorrow, cooking. Low 90s by 8 a.m. with some smoke, some more smoke, lower 100s at lunchtime. And then late in the afternoon, we think most neighborhoods will be at 110 or above. Your neighborhood forecast, neighborhoods in Henderson tomorrow should hit 113. That qualifies for smoking on your Saturday. Doesn't the lake sound good? That'll be up at 116, but the water is 84. There you go. Overnight for the Las Vegas Valley, mid 80s with some patches of smoke. We won't be down there long. Expect a high temperature on your Saturday of 112 degrees. The excessive heat warning in effect for tomorrow and Sunday. And then once the pattern changes, so does the entire weather picture. We'll see humidity roll in and chances for thunderstorms, which will actually increase from 20%. Tuesday and Wednesday with more moisture available. So maybe we'll get some thunderstorms, but we will cool down. That would be nice to have some rain. Yeah.